are ghosts real? No. Yes. Well, depends on your definition. Let's talk about that. Three, two, one. Here we go! So today, we want to talk about ghosts. <laughs> Now, we've got a lot of ground to cover over the next few minutes, so we are going to dive straight into the conversation. To keep it simple, we're going to talk about three points today, and the first one is, we do believe in spiritual beings, good yeah. and evil. Heck yeah, we do. Number two that we're going to be speaking about is, we do not believe in the souls of people lingering around on earth after death. That's dumb. So it's not my grandma haunting the house? No, it's not. Then who is it? And then lastly, we're going to end off by talking about you're either going to end this video being way more curious or way more afraid. And then how should we as Christians respond by being curious or afraid? True that. Piss off, ghost! He's freaking gone. So the Bible makes it abundantly clear that there are good and evil spirit beings. There is lots of references in the Old and New Testament that proves this point. An example from the New Testament would actually be Luke chapter 1, where an angel appears to Mary and he explains to her that she is going to give birth to the Messiah, the Son of God. That's a lot of pressure though. That's a lot of pressure. And there is also a lot of angels in the Old Testament as well that appears to people, like for example, Lot, an angel appeared to him and told him that he needs to flee the city because the city is going to be destroyed and it's going to be complete chaos. Another example from the Old Testament is in Daniel chapter 3. So Daniel and his friends, they are actually thrown into a fiery furnace for being disobedient. But then the scripture says that an angel appears with them in the fire and actually keeps them safe. That's hot. But there are also more than enough references of evil spirits in the Bible as well. True that. Mostly in the, not mostly, but especially in the New Testament where yes. Jesus helps people and sets them free of people that are oppressed by demons. Crazy. For example, in Mark chapter 4. There's this mm. man that's actually possessed by not one demon, but by a bunch of demons. And we're actually going to talk more about that story later on as well. Yeah. But like an Old Testament example as well of like evil spirit beings being present. You can, you can go read Exodus chapter 7 that actually mentions the sorcerers of Egypt and witches performing like freaky supernatural kind of paranormal activity kind of vibes. But the point we're trying to make here is that we as Christians, we would be dumb in thinking that there's nothing more out there, right? So we would be stupid in assuming that there aren't any spiritual things out there. They definitely are. We do believe in spirit beings that can be good, like angels bringing good news or provision or something like that. But we also definitely believe in evil spirit beings that like have a, an evil agenda or an evil plan to like bring malice or destruction or things like that. We definitely believe in those things. And if you want more references of this, just go read your Bible. The Bible is full True of that. supernatural abnormal stuff happening and it's actually amazing. So we spoke about in the first point that we do believe in like spirit beings that can be good or evil. And now we're going to move on to the second point. And this is where your very technical definition of the word ghost is really important. Because if you define the word ghost as spirit beings that can be good or evil, angelic or demonic, then yes, you know, we would, we would agree with that. We just said it as well. However, if you define in a very technical way the word ghost, as the soul or the spirit mm. of a departed human being, aka they died, but their soul or spirit is now lingering on earth because of some or other reason, we would disagree. Because mm. point number two is actually we do not believe in a lingering on earth after someone dies. No, I actually believe Hollywood gave us this picture of people's soul or spirits lingering here on earth because they have unfinished business. Yeah, thanks for nothing, Hollywood. Thanks for nothing. But actually, in the Bible, we read and we learn about this, that the only thing that's awaiting us when our time comes is the one thing is, did we know Jesus or did we not know Jesus? That's actually true. I want to read us a scripture from Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 5 to 6. It says the following, The living at least know they will die, 
but the dead know nothing. Okay, so it's making a statement saying the dead aren't wondering about unfinished business on earth. All right, it goes on to say they have no further reward, nor are they remembered. Whatever they did in their lifetime, loving, hating, envying, it's all gone. They no longer play a part in anything here on earth. So there is no such thing as a child that died that's lingering here on earth because he didn't live up to his full potential. Or that drunk uncle. We all know the drunk uncle. The drunk uncle ghost story. You you all know the story. It's a story of a haunted house somewhere where someone that had a really intense issue with something, they died, but now because they're angry or still drunk as a ghost, I don't know, now they're lingering on earth, switching on on and off the lights in your kitchen or opening up the doors or making freaky things happen. The Bible makes it clear. There's no lingering after death. So I had a drunk uncle. A, a drunk uncle. Shame. Yeah, he, he died of a terrible accident, but he always played with Rubik's Cubes. And whenever I'm around Rubik's Cubes, strange things happen. No ways. Funku! <gasps> uncle George! <gasps> ah! Ah! Be, be gone, Satan! The power of Christ compels you! Ah! So we definitely believe in spirit beings. They can be good or evil. Scripture makes that really clear. But scripture also makes it very clear. There's no lingering on earth after you die. The only thing that's going to happen after you die is you are either going to depart and be with God forever or you're going to depart and not be with God forever. Wait, what? Hold up now. So... Some of us have experienced this or heard stories of this of people encountering with ghosts, like a dead family mm-hmm. member yeah. or a friend maybe, or, you know, the school that's haunted by the girl and they've encountered the girl. But it wasn't necessarily this angel with a white robe or the classic demon or devil with the horns and the pitchfork. pitchfork. So what do we do about this? That is a good question, but here's the reality is the devil, he is literally described as the one who lies, the one who manipulates, you know, the one who twists truth so that we end up believing something that is false. In actual fact, 2 Corinthians 11 actually teaches us that Satan and his demons, they actually have the ability to pose as angels of light, you know, or masquerade as something other than what they really are. So we can conclude that devil and his demons can pose or masquerade as the dead family member or the schoolgirl haunting your house. So they are pretending to be the ghosts. Yes, exactly. The truth is the devil feeds off lies. The good news is, remember, sin and death has been conquered forever through the life, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. So literally the only tool at his disposal, the enemy, the devil, the Satan, whatever you want to call him, still has, is lying to us, manipulating us, making us believe something that is not true or other than Jesus. So even if you had a, you or someone had a good encounter with a Casper, a good encounter, a good encounter yeah. with a Casper, the friendly ghost or the small boy helping you or you helping the small boy. And it's really this good and wonderful moment. It's actually still Satan misleading you and drawing you away from Jesus. And this actually typically shows his agenda. He will come no, to you. True as a good spirit or evil spirit, and even if it's still a good spirit, his agenda is still drawing you away from Jesus. And remember, that fits his mission statement 100%. If the devil can get you to believe anything else other than Jesus, then he's won. So whether he uses a good Casper ghost kind of story or whether he uses the Annabelle doll or the whatever, it fits his MO. He's trying to mislead you. But again, Hollywood, you know, we're going to do another episode on Hollywood and like the movies Christians should or shouldn't be watching. We're going to get to that. But let's be honest, Hollywood often teaches us that ghosts are these wonderful, friendly, mild little beings that need our help. So they either need our help to move on towards the light, which is kind of messed up because that would make us God. And that is not cool. You know, all the movies teach us that we are in a, you know, emotional bad place you know we have some trauma that we still need to work through i'm still processing that death of that family member so now the ghost of that family member 
appears, you know, and helps me work through that. But then doesn't that then make the ghost, you know, kind of God in a sense, which is also messed up. So movies like Charlie and Cloud, Just Like Heaven, Ghost, The Sixth Sense, all those things teach us that ghosts can be friendly. But again, it fits the enemy's mission statement because it distracts us. It leads us away to believe something that is not true. So even if it's a good encounter, a bad encounter, the point is the devil wants to manipulate you, wants to lie to you and draw you away from Jesus. That is true. So, okay, we've said that we do believe in spirit beings. They can be good or bad. We don't believe in a lingering, but I'm about to throw a spanner into this conversation. Listen up. There's there's an awkward elephant in the room we still have to discuss. Oh, well, yeah. You and I know about the awkward elephant because yeah. we prepared for this. Yeah, to prepare for it. But there is an actual account written in the Bible where someone calls up the spirit of someone that had died and then it actually happens. Then this departed soul actually ends up communicating with the person that called them. What? First Samuel chapter 28, folks. This is going to blow your mind. It literally blew my mind when I read this. First Samuel 28 actually records the story of King Saul. He was king at that stage. But it records the story where he goes to a medium. You know, that's like a fortune teller, like the crystal ball, you know, kind of vibes. I will tell you your future, son. He ends up going to a medium and then he asks this medium, can you please call up the spirit or the soul of Samuel, whom they knew, but Samuel had died. A soul calls a soul. Ha, that's hilarious. But he asks the medium to call up the spirit of Samuel because he needs to ask Samuel for advice and hold on to your hats. It happens. It happens actually happens go read it first samuel chapter 28 he ends up calling the soul of a departed human being and that soul appears so doesn't that then kind of undermine the whole idea we've been talking about thus far no so when reading the bible it's always important not just to read certain sentences or just certain stories you actually need to read the whole story or the whole bible the whole bible (laughs) the entire bible just to get the context of the story yes so let me tell you a little bit about the context of the story so first samuel chapter 28 when saul goes to the medium and he asks her to call up the spirit of samuel he does this because he says to the medium god is no longer speaking with him he can't hear the voice of god so now he needs other means of like you know, guidance or advice or whatever, but that's not really true. If you go read earlier on in the book of Samuel, God did actually very clearly speak to Saul and he ended up saying to Saul, I am going to give you over to your enemies. I am going to cause bad things to happen to you, you know, because you are disobedient to me. You are no, that is, that's kind of harsh. I know. You're no longer listening to me. Your heart is not soft towards me. So I'm going to like step aside, you know, and kind of just give you over to the really bad decisions that you are busy making. So Saul saying that God isn't speaking to him and now he needs to go seek the advice of a ghost or something is really, it's not the truth. And sometimes we do the same, Mm. right? You know, God isn't speaking to me. God isn't helping me. God isn't answering my prayers. I'm going to go speak to other things out there to get the advice or the guidance I need. Second thing regarding the context of the story is the very fact that he ends up visiting a medium to kind of call up the ghost of Samuel was point blank illegal. Right before he visits the medium, Saul himself, obviously via God, he passes a law saying that to visit the medium, witchcraft, sorcery, necromancer, all those kinds of things are illegal you are not allowed to do those things crazy yeah actually a funny moment when samuel the ghost the ghost the appears, ghost it, appears happens, yeah. it happens samuel actually points him out and say why did you call me god already spoke to you so even samuel <laughs> the, ghost, the ghost he didn't have anything new to say no new revelation no new you know kind of form of advice he just ends up saying dude 
God already really spoke spoken. to you. Yeah. And I think Saul was actually a bit ashamed at that moment. Definitely. Because the one place he went for to go help that wasn't God actually points him to God, <laughs> showing him God already spoke to you. God has mm. a plan for you, even though it's not going to be the best, best time of that. your life. Mm. But God already has a plan for you. And I think that's such an important message to very, not go and search for important. it, not go look for other things. It's not Jesus plus this or if God yes. didn't give you the answer you want. Go no, speak to a medium. No, no ghost is ever going to reveal something new. Yeah. Okay. The only thing that matters is what God has already said. You know, and I mean, we often do the same. It's kind of as if in this moment, you know, God's revelation to Saul wasn't enough. You know, let's be honest. He didn't like what God was busy saying. So he was like, you know, I'm going to go find some other means of yeah. advice or whatever. But the fact is God did speak. So in God's so sovereign character, why he would allow, you know, an actual ghost to kind of appear, we, we can't say that with absolute clarity. But the point is, even if you want to interpret this as a ghost apparition, the point of the story is the ghost anyway ends up saying, dude, mm. God has already spoken. Don't call me. And I would be super offended as a ghost. No. I'm like, dude, I've got <laughs> things to do. I'm chilling in my golden mansion there up in heaven i've got harps to play i've got clouds to sleep on you know so even the ghost apparition if you want to interpret it that way the ghost ends up saying dude god has already said all these really important things to you and i want to say that to our you know watchers as well the reality mm. is there's no more supernatural or radical thing that you can ever discover outside of jesus if you continue reading your bible you will see that jesus is the most radical the most supernatural the most kind of out there wonderful being that you can discover and actually communicate with exactly there is a lot to discover yep. but also just on another note god really takes offense when you do stuff like that when you go to witches or psychics or yes. be part of witchcraft he's very clear about yeah. that all throughout scripture he prohibits that he actually describes it as spiritual prostitution <laughs> oh that That's is a bit harsh. that is so harsh but god point blank prohibits the practice of witchcraft sorcery even just attempting to communicate with the spirit beings out there so don't do that but we will admit this is a freaky moment in scripture it's weird okay like funky it, it's funky but the reality is there are lots of weird funky moments in scripture that won't always necessarily make sense to us think about an ocean opening up and people walking through it or how about a huge ass fish swallowing a man whole sure. and then vomiting him out again but that's imagine funky. that imagine staying in a fish for a few days and that's gross that's gross. gross that's gross another thing is also in the old testament there's literally fire raining down from from the heavens the earth is splitting open to swallow up people that was disobedient towards god it's funky there is really really crazy stuff happening in the bible and mm. i think aiden said it so well just now earlier on about jesus mm. in the bible you can discover so much magnificent mm. really great and your supernatural things <laughs> in the Bible regarding this. And Jesus... The point is, the Bible isn't boring, folks. The Bible isn't boring. It's yeah. not. If someone ever told you the Bible is boring, slap them. Just slap them and tell them to go read the Bible because they're going to discover something magnificent, powerful, mm. and that person's name is Jesus. So considering the story of 1 Samuel chapter 28, are ghosts real? Yes. Yeah. Look, looks like it. It definitely looks like we can assume that there are definitely spirit beings out there. They can be good or evil. It's true, folks. It can actually happen. But now the question is, how do we as Christians respond to the idea of evil spirit beings or good spirit beings or ghosts or whatever? Because I'm willing to bet that you are either curious or afraid right now at no. this moment. You're either thinking, I need to find out more about this, mm. or you're thinking... Have I opened up myself to demonic <laughs> influences out there? And to the curious crowds out there, I think, you know, to kind of conclude as well, I would want to say to the curious crowds, number one is trust your father's opinion about these things. Here's the thing. When I was still small, it's hard to imagine mm. that I was smaller than I am right now, but I was actually much smaller. You're tiny. <laughs> tiny. But I hated my parents whenever they said, 
Aiden, don't run into traffic, you know, or Aiden, don't put your finger into the electrical socket or whatever. I, body poopers. I, I always thought my parents are so lame, you know, they suck out all the joy and the fun out of life, you know, by, by keeping me from traffic, you know, or electricity. But now that I'm a grown up, you know, now that I'm a grown up, I actually realized my parents actually loved me. They still love me, but they loved me and they had my best interest at heart in saying, don't run into traffic because I would have died. Yeah. Okay. There would be no Aiden left if I was left to, you know, discover electricity for myself as a toddler. And oftentimes when God prohibits something, you know, like witchcraft or sorcery or even like sex before marriage, right? We end up thinking, oh, God is such a party pooper. He sucks. He sucks out all the joy and fun out of life. But it's not because he's sucking out the fun out of life. It's because he loves you. He has your best interest at heart. So if you are curious about these things, my encouragement, Mm. our encouragement would be trust God's perspective on these things. The fact that he does prohibit the attempt, you know, at communicating. So throw away your Ouija boards, folks. I know you've been playing around around with them throw them away it's not a good practice (laughs) as a christian but trust god because again the reality is he's way more incredible bigger better stronger Mm. than anything else you could discover like a ghost yeah definitely and then also for the guys that's a bit scared right now at this moment scared of ghosts happening or the fact that it's not even ghosts anymore it's not your friendly uncle it's a demon in happening or whatever it may be just remember this one thing jesus has one so it's actually yeah. really cool. Jesus has won, folks. Woohoo! That's we good live news. in victory. Yeah. Jesus has won. Jesus has that won. That is such good news. That's great. And there's actually this cool story for me just in Mark chapter 4. Where we spoke about it earlier about the guy that was possessed by a bunch of demons. He was abnormally strong. He hurt mm. himself. He was in self-isolation. The people couldn't handle the Thank way you. he was acting with all the demons inside of him. To all the Hollywood directors out there, Mark chapter 4. We'd make an incredible oh, horror movie. Such a cool horror Just movie. Just throwing it out there. Definitely. Especially if Jesus is the main character in yes, that movie. Do because it. when Jesus arrived with his disciples, he had an appointment with that guy. Mm. And that guy came, or he went to that guy, and even the demons inside of him shuddered. Mm. They were afraid. They acknowledged mm. Jesus as king. Lord, they, yeah. They literally begged them and asked them, Yo, can you rather just send us to the pigs and we'll sort ourselves out? Yeah. And they did. They drowned themselves actually in the yeah. water. And it's actually really cool showing the authority that Jesus has yeah. over all that's these good. things that we just spoke of. And that's very important for you to remember as well as a Mm. Christian because we live in the victory that Jesus gave us and therefore Mm. we also have authority over these things. It's not this battle between God and Satan. You're like they're they're hand wrestling one another. No, actually I I love this example. It's darkness and light. They they speak about a lot in the Bible, but darkness and light, when it's a dark room and I switch on the Mm. light, there's no such thing as the darkness and the lights like wrestling it out, battling it out, who's going to win? No. no, when I put on the light, there's light. It's light. As simple as that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, are ghosts real? Yes. It would appear so. Is Jesus real? Definitely. Absolutely. Is he better? Yes. Stronger? Yes. Way more interesting mm. than Bring anything it. else supernatural you yes. could ever discover? Hallelujah. Yes, he you're is. Jesus, you're the one. Let's go to three, two, one. Here we go. Okay, who's gonna start though? Who's mm. gonna intro and then? <coughs> Can you imagine the day on the Good Question Show that has nothing to do with anything? No, it's not the Good Question Show that is good questions that have yeah, nothing to do with anything. anything. Good questions that has have 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Have 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 nothing to do with anything. Today is a good question. Good show. questions that have nothing to do with anything. Okay, good questions that have nothing to do with anything. Yeah. Has one segment <laughs> teaching Frank. <laughs> not all. Not the whole world. Not the whole The whole Bible. We've got the whole. So today on Good Questions That Have Nothing To Do With Anything, we're speaking about why do men have nipples? 
I honestly don't know why I'm a part of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, why this is a conversation? Why this we even need, is a conversation? We need well, a we, different angle. We, we need answers. Let's be honest. All men have thought, thought of this. Yeah. The like, only thing to consider nipples? is how funky all of you would look with no nipples. You would literally only have a belly button. Imagine and th- that. That's weird. My question is, did Adam and Eve have a belly button? I think maybe Eve. Why? But I'm, maybe I'm just... Okay, I'm but just, let's, just, let's focus on the nipples before we focus on the belly button. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> yeah, the thing about nipples is, by the way, like yeah. if a man doesn't really need it, like there's no function Why for it, I feel. <sighs> like you can just like no, get stonies from it, really. Yeah. And Ow. it tells you if it's cold outside. Pretty much that's all my nipples do. Imagine if you didn't have how do you nipples. Know, how do you know when it's cold outside? It gets pointy. How, how do you know? <laughs> yeah. So it gets pointy when it's cold outside. It looks like I'm smuggling Astros. No, I, I have no idea why I'm here. It's just good to be honest. I'm never going to eat Astros ever in my life again. <laughs> I don't know where they come from now. <laughs> oh man, but actually if you think about it, how many other useless parts of the body do we have? I mean, that's actually yeah, a good that's, one. That's Wisdom good one. teeth. Appendix. My mom says my ears. Appendix. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Appendix, otherwise known as your blinder. 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 Also a useless organ. But did you guys know that goosebumps actually, like biologically, goosebumps no longer serve a purpose at all? So if you think about it, goosebumps but how do you know also. What do you mean no longer? Th- they're also because apparently our ancestors, like goosebumps, formed a part of like the fight or flight kind of response situation. So uh, it's like a cat. You know, they made themselves look bigger in like a tense situation so, so it's like goosebumps uh, i just thought they stepped on something get jacked <laughs> <laughs> so useless organs you know so i i, I would kind of put yeah. men's nipples into the same category yeah. that it's they're it's nicer there because it completes the set you that know works. but not necessarily yeah. <laughs> set of nipples <laughs> But the purpose of nipples it completes, it completes the, the, completes it's the, the same. So it's like, all for the aesthetic. It's a necessary yeah. feature on your body. <laughs> it's just for the aesthetic. But to be honest, so <laughs> as part of the kind of preparation, we actually did some research. Don't yeah. ever do research no. like that because funky things pop up to Luckily the Luckily, I didn't click on images. So, but but you, <laughs> you you actually and I actually also figured out like a, a bunch of pretty cool stuff. So the real like honest. Like biological reason to me is completely <laughs> lost it, <laughs> and tomorrow I'm also completely lost it. But there is actually a legit. I'm interested. I'm interested. Brain's interested. I'm there interested. is a legit biological reason mm-hmm. why men have nipples, no. and that's actually because when you develop in your mother's womb as a fetus, you actually develop nipples before you develop your gender. Yeah. No. And it's not like once your gender, aka okay. a man, has now developed, like your your nipples could disappear inside your mother's womb. So <laughs> all of us actually have. nipples nipples and then only your reproductive organs yeah. start to form but by then you already have nipples so sure. it's it's just there again it completes the set is it just me or does the word nipple sound really funny <laughs> 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 we keep saying nipple nipple, nipple. Yeah. i'm so nipple. uncomfortable nipple. right now <laughs> but speaking of uncomfortable while we were researching <laughs> <our days>. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of being yeah, uncomfortable, but, yeah. but go. Yeah. yeah, sorry, but while we, and this is a very, this was very disturbing for me. So one of the reasons came that came up is some men, not all men, some men use it for breastfeeding. Hello, that's impossible, man. There's no milk that comes out of us. Be- because of because of hormones. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Men, men can breastfeed if they go for hormone men manipulation. Men then men they can actually yeah. men make men. manipulate their breasts so that they can actually yeah. lactate and produce milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that. Do not, no. Why? I, I so honestly why don't know. Get nipple rings. Nipple Yo, rings. That's a good question. Ow. I'm with you. I'm still so uncomfortable being a part of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys want to see something crazy. The point is, nipples for men, they complete the set. Are they useful? No. Yeah, but it's good that they're there, we guess. Yeah. Is, that, is that kind of the conclusion? Yeah, it's, it's better that they're there. They yeah. would look weird. Yeah, yeah it would look weird. You would look weird without mm. them. Mm. So That is it for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank goodness. <laughs> Ring the bell. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye. 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 Ghost real? No. no. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> okay. Cool.
I'm real. I'm a real ghost. I'm a real ghost. Okay. I'm a real ghost. <laughs> okay. The end.